Before continuing to develop the MPC script with the moving function, I need to introduce another integral part of Unity. This, I think, is an essential item that can be used and very useful in a lot of projects, and that is Raycast. So let's jump to the Unity script reference and look at Raycast. Okay, we're looking at physics Raycast. And here we have several examples of how to use a Raycast. Here's what we'll be dealing with. Also going to get some hit information based on what our Raycast hits. So you see the Raycast hit variable can actually store many points of data for us. So if our Raycast hits something, we can get a lot of information based on the collider that that Raycast hit. So let's create another prototype scene and a script and get things happening. Now, I've set up a decent standing character there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create prefab of our player. Simply drag it and drop it. And there we go. You see Unity has created a prefab for us. Similarly to save time, I might create a prefab for the floor. Okay, so let's create a new script first. Create JavaScript. And this will be my Raycast example. Now creating new scene. Now that's asking for changes because we've turned those into prefabs. I will save that. And this scene will be our Raycast example scene. So quickly throw together a prototype level, we'll bring in our floor, we'll create a directional light, lift that up out of the way, let's bring in that player prefab, and I'm going to create a couple of objects that have colliders for us to start referencing and checking what our raycast is doing. Create a cube, create a sphere, and I'll also create a cylinder. You'll see why I'm using these objects in a moment. It's just something some colliders, some different types of colliders for our Raycast to hit so we can start to see how the Raycast works and how we can get information from that Raycast. There's a couple of primitives. Okay, so let's start to develop the script. I'll bring up our example here. Now as I previously mentioned, this first example we don't have a parameter in this function for our hit information, but we want to return information based on what our raycast hit. So I'm going to use the second example here. Let's bring up our script. Now let's look at some of the parameters. We need an origin. Now for our origin, I'm going to use player. So I'm going to create a variable to cache our transform component again, and it's the type transform. So there's, of course, in the start function, we're going to assign that value to that variable. So there we have we've cached our transform. That will be our origin. Our direction will be based on our transform position as well. We'll use our transform forward. We're just raycasting the direction we're looking. 
Yeah, we have some hit info here. So we need to create a variable which our hit information will be stored for us to reference later. Let's start off with that in the update. What else do we have? We have a distance. Let's create a variable for that. So I float. Now I'm just going to set it to 10 point. 10. always have the labels of your naming convention in the camel case. Okay, so let's build this function. If physics raycast. Now what were our parameters if we cross reference the entity scripting reference? We have our origin which is going to be the position variable of our transform component. And again, for a direction, I'm going to use the forward of our transform. So whichever direction our transform is facing, that is the direction the ray will be cast. The third parameter, we have our hit information. This is where we put our variable. So when the physics ray cast does actually hit something, that's going to store our information. And finally we have distance. That is how far we're going to cast the ray for. You see the final parameter layer mask. Now I do already have planned a whole new series just all about ray casting and getting into ray casts, hit information, and also layers and layer masks and tags. But for now, just to move on with the MPC, I'm just going to introduce the essentials, this type of set up for the raycast that we're going to be using for that. So what do we have? Pretty much have our commands set up. Now if I save that, we'll go to our scene, we'll attach the raycast example to our player. There we have our variables. If I hit play, the transform variable is assigned, it's populated. There's nothing much happening there, it's nothing exciting going on. We can't really see what the raycast is doing. Now, a great way to start with raycasts is to also set up a visual representation so we can see how our raycast is behaving. So let's look at debug again. Now, here's our debug text that we're printing out to our console. There's a couple of draws here. We have draw line, we have draw ray. So draw line, you give it a start position vector, and you give it an end position vector. Now we're dealing with a direction and a distance. So let's look at draw ray. Here we have it. We have start position, we have a directional vector. And if we look at the example, the direction is actually multiplied out by the distance. So let's put this debug in so we can see what's happening with our ray. Debug, draw ray, and those parameters again, because we're emulating our ray cast, we can use the same values. We're using our origin. We're using our direction, but as in the above example, that is actually multiplied out by our distance. And then finally, I'm just going to add a color. Okay, so if we save that out, go back to our scene. Now when we hit play, we should see a visual representation of our ray being cast. There we have it. A visual representation of our ray cast. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. See, as the ray hits an object, we want to know several things. So how do we access the information from that ray cast hit variable if our ray cast does hit something? First I'm just going to modify this. 
we're only going to draw that line if our ray cast does not hit anything. So let's take that out. Let's pop it down here. And again, just to test that, I'll show you what I've done. So if I hit play, there we see our ray cast being represented. And as you can see, it's not actually intersecting with any colliders. It hasn't hit anything. Now if I quickly move this around, there you go, you see the ray has actually hit something. So it's disappeared. So our conditional is working there. So let's work on when it does hit something. If we go back to the ray cast in hit information, the first one they show us here is a point. The impact point in world space where the ray hit a collider. Now we had a debug for a position. So we have the draw line here. So let's pop that in when our ray cast does actually hit something. So debug, draw line this time. And the parameters for that, we have our star position, which is of course where we're casting it from. This time it says an end position in world space. And as we just checked, that is from our hit variable, the ray cast hit, and the point variable of that ray cast hit. What else do we have here? We have color, duration. Let's pop in a color. Let's make it different. So, so I'm going to set it a color of red. And let's just see what happens if I leave the other parameters out, the duration. So again, we'll save our scene. Let's test that out. So we have our yellow line indicating that our ray is not intersecting with anything. And as you see, as we collide with something, the raycast hit information has returned a hit point. That's as far as our debug is being drawn to. Even if I drag him back. There we go. So that's beyond the 10. And that's coming in. So immediately, we've already utilized some information that's being returned from our raycast hit. And we have a visual representation of our raycast. That's great. So what else can we find out from our raycast? Let's just do a debug to our console. We're going to tell ourselves the ray hit. And what did it hit? What do we want to know? Let's find out the name of the game object first off. So we want our hit, and we want to find out the collider of that hit, and the game object that collider is on. And let's just ask it for its name. Save that out. Check for errors. Now I'm happy with this scene, so I'm going to save it here quickly. Let's run that, and we'll check our console and see what we have. So as we're casting our ray, come to what is quite clearly the cylinder. There we have it. So the ray hit a game object, a collider of a game object that is named cylinder. Let's continue with testing that. Come across. There we have. The ray has hit the sphere, the cylinder, and the cube. And there we have it. Now, that's pretty much all I wanted to introduce into this video. Just to show you Raycast, a basic example of Raycast, using the hit information from a Raycast. And also how to use some debugs, just so we can see visually our raycasts at work. Helps when you're starting out, just so you can see what's going on without guessing where that raycast is.